this time, please welcome our next two inductors this evening, the superstar, Dickie Rods, and the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. If you ever look at a wrestling signing or a wrestling event, if you look in the back and you see a man like Brutus Beefcake, you know, six foot two, three, four, whatever he is, and you look behind him, there's Bobby Rydell. So you pretty much recognize him through his flashy clothing or being behind a six foot giant. Uh, what started off as a working relationship between Bobby and I have grown into a, a bigger friendship than the working relationship could ever be. Uh, Bobby opens doors for many wrestlers in the business. And although Bobby didn't think highly of me in the beginning of my career, in fact, I was a screw up. Uh, five years later, Bobby took a second look and saw a boy that matured into a man, and a man that wanted to be educated in professional wrestling. Whereas my co-workers were going out and having fun, drinking beer, and doing whatever, uh, I would go home and study tapes, and Bobby took great interest in it. And his first project, uh, Johnny Ova retired from the ring and I was lucky enough to get a phone call one of the very few phone calls I actually answered and uh, it was Bobby oh you know it and uh, it was Bobby Rydell offering me a spot to be Ted's legs in a ring in Connecticut for a wrestling seminar that Ted could not do the physical parts of it because unfortunately for Ted he has bad knees uh, I was nervous as all hell but the first door in my career was open and it was a very big door and very large shoes to fill. Never did I think I'd get an opportunity to work with a legend. Um, being a professional wrestler on independent scene, you're lucky enough to get a booking here and there. You're lucky enough to be somebody that they want to bring back. Um, so when I got this call, I knew I had to take it. And uh, I ended up meeting Ted at a buffet when him and I weren't on diets. And, uh, and, uh, I was shocked to have Ted himself ask me for his support. So from there, uh, Bobby opened many doors for me, and basically he said, and it was very easy for him to open doors. Um, the thing was is that he put me to the test, and that test was, was I gonna walk through that door, or was I gonna stand there and be happy in a small pond? Was I gonna be happy in New York, wrestling in front of 200 people, and pretending to be a heavyweight champion to friends and family? Well, it's good enough to say I went through that door, and now I'm here today inducting him into the Hall of Fame in front of a lot of luminaries that I have looked up to in my past and, and present uh, for help and guidance in this business. Um, so the contributions that Bobby has made to professional wrestling as far as to the boys is endless. Uh, you know, it doesn't always have to be something involving wrestling. If you have a problem with your girlfriend, your parents, a job or anything like that. Bobby was always there. 
to answer the phone and listen to your problems, no matter how long and how stupid the problem was. Um, and if I hadn't opened uh, my own door and uh, listened to him ramble, as I used to say, about Jesus Christ, I don't think I would have cleaned up my act and I probably wouldn't be standing here right now because I got deeper and deeper into drugs and alcohol. So, um, I know there's people here today that are very close to Bobby and very good friends of his. If not, they wouldn't have been here and they wouldn't have went up to him before this had started and thank him for everything he's done. And um, I'm happy that I got to be uh, one of the boys, the boy, the man, come up here and speak on his behalf. Uh, in great company uh, with a great friend in Ted. Um, I hope that one day when I'm looking out to the crowd, it's on national television and it's working for Vince McMahon. Because then and there I'll call Bobby and instead of crying on the phone about a girlfriend or a fight with my mother or a fight with friends or being fed up with a position that I am in my home company in New York, I'm going to turn to him and say, hey man, I had a great match on TV tonight. You see that? <laughs> and I hope that one day Bobby will take a look in the mirror and realize that he has impacted not only my life, but many people's lives. And not just through professional wrestling, but through his faith and his own experiences. And uh, Bobby, I just want to thank you for opening doors and contributing to my career because the last two years of, of my wrestling career have been outstanding and there's no words to describe them. And I hope that your detractors will actually open their eyes and listen and see that you have a lot more to offer than the bullcrap that's written down or said. And I don't want you to be mad at me for bringing all that up, but I think it's very important that you hear that on this very special day for you. And. Uh, I think your new name shouldn't be Agents of the Stars. I really think it should be the Psychiatrist of the Stars <laughs> because that is your strongest point. And sometimes I think about why you didn't take an education uh, further than you did instead of just getting a piece of paper that says, hey, um, I could be a teacher and putting it aside and saying, I want to follow my dream of pro wrestling. But if you didn't, then most of us would not be here today. Um, and thank you for giving me a friend in Ted DiBiase who has become not only a role model uh, a mentor, but somewhat of a father figure, and a great, great traveling partner. So, before I bring him in, I just want to say congratulations on your induction. Uh, I love you, buddy, and thank you for the friendship and the brothership that you have given me over the past five years. You're incredible, buddy. And now, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Choice. They're trying to protect talent. 
And there's a tremendous shortage of quality talent in wrestling today. But I'm going to tell you something. If it weren't for the Indies, where would they go? Where would they go? So I take my hat, my, my hat off to all of you in this room, no matter where, where you are or what you're doing or what group you're with. I don't care. Thank you for loving the industry that I've loved all my life. And, and, and you know what? Don't ever give up your dream. That's what I told this kid. Don't ever give up your dream. But Bobby right now, you know, uh, you know, this is not so much about Bobby being a, a wrestling manager as it is him being a facilitator, an agent, if you will. And he's represented a lot of people. And uh, and third third party booking, Sherry Martell, Martin Zanetti, Heidenreich. Uh, he represents me. Uh, Bobby does bookings for me. Now, I know the one thing, regardless of whether you're in the Indies or you wrestle at the very, very top, that we've all experienced as wrestlers is shady promoters. You know, not getting your money, not getting what you were promised. Well, you were promised one thing, and when you got there, it was something totally different. How many agree with that? <laughs> Absolutely. This happened to a lot of us. Uh, but thank God there are honest promotions and honest promoters. The thing about Bobby is just that he calls his his booking agency integrity bookings. And that's exactly what it is. Uh, I met Bobby back after I had uh, ended my active wrestling career and become a commentator slash ringside manager. And uh, we developed a uh, friendship even before we developed a professional relationship. Uh, more importantly than saying that Bobby represents me and books me for uh, appearances and special events is that he's my friend. Uh, you know, I was 38 years old before I really grew up. I was at the height of my fame and, and, and uh, in, in the industry. And back when I thought that, uh, that you judged your manhood by the size of your biceps, how much beer you can drink, how big your, your house and your car were, and how many girls you go to bed with. But when I was 38 years old, I hit that wall and I had to come to uh, face to face with reality. And uh, I understand something to that. The size of a man is measured not by any of those things. If you think that's what your manhood is measured by, then you need to grow up. It's the size of your character and the strength of your integrity. A measure of a man's integrity is his word, and if his word's no good, he's worthless. He's worthless. Integrity is when, uh, it's what you do behind closed doors. It's what you do when the shades are gone and nobody can see what you're doing. It's when your friend calls on you and says, hey man, you know, I got this project to do, and I need your help, and will you be there for me? And you say, yes, I'll be there. And then but some buddy comes along and says, hey man, I got two tickets to the game. Yeah, but I promised Joe that I'd be there for him. Well, you know, Joe won't ever know. And you know what, Joe may not, may not ever find out, but you know. And if you don't follow through, then you are someone who has little integrity. And the thing that I admire most about my friend Bobby is just that his integrity. Uh, and I want him to be honored here tonight for that, for, for not only the fact that he is fair and he's honest, and it's, you know, and a lot of guys, you know, I, I've been represented by other people. You know, and it's, you know, I've, I've had a couple of different agents, if you will. And they're more interested in their percentage and what they're going to get than they are in your name. And quite frankly, sometimes you find out, you know, like uh, I've been married for almost 27 years now, and, and my wife has this uncanny judge of character. And there have been a couple of times when she said, Honey, I don't know if I trust that guy. I said, Ah, he's okay. I like, you know, honey, he's great, you know. Twice I've had to go back and go, You know what, honey, you were right. But I've never had to do that with Bobby Wardell. Uh, Bobby's the kind of guy who he he tries to make sure it's done right. He goes way out of his way to make it make sure it's done right. He goes way out of his way to make 
sure you, you're done right, that person that he's representing. And he's got the kind of integrity that if, if something goes wrong, if all the money's not there, he makes sure you're going to get yours first, even if it costs him. There aren't too many, if any, agents that I know that are like that. This guy is. So I am very honored and very proud to be here and to have and been asked to come here uh, and induct uh, not only my agent, but my good friend, Bobby Rydell, into the 2009 New England Hall of Fame. Here. That was very, very kind of you. Dicky. <laughs> I take things very seriously, so I kind of tunnel vision and I work very hard at what I do. When I get on the road, I get very stressed out, whether it be through connecting flights and delays. And I mean, this is my 17th day on the road, actually. I haven't been, I've been home one night, which was last night, I think, or two nights ago. And uh, Dicky makes me laugh. So he gets me through these horrible experiences by uh, teaching me how to laugh. And that's so needed because it's like a medicine, correct? But um, anyway, I was also want to say thank you to the Hall of Fame. I want to echo the words of uh, Jim Kegner and, and Sheldon. Uh, Joe, where, if ever, here's Joe. Thank you, Joe, for putting this together for the last four years. So at least we have something here in New England. That's important. And uh, again, give a hand to all the, the uh, not the nominees, but the inductees today. So. You know, I'm only 34 now, but I actually started out a lot younger, um, 16. So I had to have some people influence me and kind of steer me the right direction. I call them like my wrestling mom and dad. Uh, Jim Kettner is actually one of those people. So Jim, thank you very much sitting there with our iced teas for hours on end. <laughs> I appreciate it. And uh, Georgie Amapropolis, actually the wrestling chatterbox, wrestlingbigs.com. She has guided me and, and we need to thank her too. Um, you know, not everyone in wrestling is, is bad, you know, we talk about a lot of people that can be, you know, they're nuisances or, this, you know, like wrestling promoters, how many times have we shown up to shows and there's six people there and the promoter's not one of them. Um, <laughs> you know, well, there's more, more wrestlers in the locker room than there are in the stands, you know, the, the fans. So, there are some great people. There's mover and shakers in the wrestling industry and, you know, just to find those people like and, and be, get attracted to them, they're like a magnet. And, you know, we can make this whole industry a better place. I mean, we've had enough sad things happen in the last several years, correct? Between deaths and everything else that, that goes through. And, and, you know, we need more people that are solid that can help people. So maybe if I start charging, like you said, Dickie, some psychiatric therapy, maybe I make more money. But, um, you know, that that's very uh, important to do is find very good people. And John Arezzi, I don't know if any of you know John Arezzi. You do? Okay, well he, he you too, excellent. Um, he actually broke with the one that broke me in uh, at 16 years old. And then luckily, through him helping me out, that led me to Vince and Linda McMahon in the WWE in WrestleMania 11, which was actually where I, you know, my first real payday was WrestleMania 11 in, in Hartford. And uh, from that point, even to this day, I have a very good relationship with them, third-party booking agent for the office. Uh, have actually quite a few signings coming up. But um, I, I'm very grateful to them because I stood and I would watch Vince at Madison Square Garden, for example, and, and I would just be very quiet. And I would just watch him and what he does at the curtain. And, um, I learned a lot by watching. 
and, and I learned, you know, even with Jim Kettner, his, the way he ran his ECW way, I mean, five star. Who's been there with Jim Kettner? Woo! Um, that guy is so good. He's so good, Jim Kettner. I learned a lot from Jim Kettner. Um, you know, and then there's some cast of characters. Uh, you know, Ted mentioned Sherry Martell and Marty Jannetty. Well, you know, God, I have a story about Marty Jannetty. I mean, we all know he's wild, right? <laughs> You know, there was a time where, you know, it was actually the night Louis Spicoli died. And uh, Marty was very upset. He had wrestled him the week before. So Marty uh, stormed out of the hotel where we were, and I didn't know where he went. And I'm searching for him, and I actually find him in the woods. And if you know Marty, this sounds like a normal story. And he says, you know, you, you see that, that hospital over there? I said, yeah. yeah it's, it's actually an insane asylum. Because you want to go scare the people on the first floor? So that's what I did. That, that's not normally me, but uh, you know, we, we scared them on the first floor, and, and you know, it was just a detractor to get him away from his problems that night. Then there was another time we're in uh, some type of grocery store, and, and Sherry and, and Marty were with me. I couldn't find them. They were somewhere. I couldn't find. Them. It was like three o'clock in the morning. It was a twenty-four hour place. Sherry was going to start cooking for us at that time, and uh, then I hear all this commotion in one of the aisles. And I look down there, and Sherry has a long pepperoni stick, and Marty's throwing cheese doodles, a bag of cheese doodles, and they're playing baseball. So instead of being the good therapist, I said, well, let me at least play catch. So I got down, and there we are, and then of course we got in big trouble from management <laughs> later on that night. But uh, those are some good memories that you have in wrestling, and, and there's some incredible experiences I've, I've been with. Um, Greg Valentine, Luna Vachon have been instrumental in helping me over the years with some advice. And uh, Luna's a very tough person, if any of you met her, so she she has really uh, not some sentiment to me over the years. And you know, Dickie also mentioned Johnny Ova. Uh, John got married and retired. Uh, he he really pushed me beyond my limits. Um, kind of gave me like a second chance in many ways. Got me out of my comfort zone. Uh, from a managing perspective, Jimmy Hart. And Lou Albano have been mentors. Jimmy's a great, great friend of mine. Keep praying for Lou Albano. He's not doing too good right now. Uh, my New York crew, which is in the back over there, they actually have guided me and helped me in the last two years. It's been a rough two years and emotionally. Uh, my website, actually, integritybookings.com, uh, Greg Carter, who sits at that table right there, he put that whole thing together as a gift to me, which forced me to have to kind of jump back into this thing again and uh, get me out of the pit that I was in for a while. Um, you know, and lastly, I'd like to obviously thank all the promoters, all the fans, the referees, uh, ring announcers, ring crew. This is your business. It's our business. And, you know, it's your efforts. You put your life on the line. We do this every day. And someone said, I don't remember who it was, but you make your family on the road. And, you know, that's so true. And I have been very blessed to be with... Uh, Ted DiBiase for, for many, many years now. I think it's been close to 10 years with, with you. And uh, we, we've been over the border and uh, we've done shows where we've had 4,000 people and you know we had a response uh, during our Christian shows of maybe 2,000, sometimes 2,500. We had a sold out show in New York of 3,200. And uh, he's become my on the road pastor. <laughs> so thank you very much, Reverend Theodore DiBiase. I need to become your driving teacher as well. <laughs> all the way up here. I'll take the money back. <laughs> but he is, he's, he's, a, he's a father figure to many. He's my on the road pastor. Uh, I love him dearly. I love his wife, Melanie. Uh, I think uh, she and I can do a number together in New York City. But uh, she, she's totally awesome. And, and once again, um, my grandparents, who really were the ones that got me to fall in love with the industry, took me all over in uh, you know, the Meadowlands, the Coliseum, uh, even sometimes Bridgeport, and uh, Bridgeport, New Haven. Uh, they're no longer here. I would love for them to be here to, to see this. Actually, my grandfather hated you, Ted. Good to see you. All Italian, you know, he didn't like when he paid off the you know, two referees and Hogan lost, you know that is. But, um, and my parents. My parents were in the back, they came all the way up with my aunt and uncle. They have... 
they have housed so many of these people. Uh, we have burnt mattresses from wrestlers who smoked in beds. Uh, they have come to uh, jails, basically prisons with us to help get people out of prison. <laughs> that has a point of sleeping at my house. She's, my mom's cooked at two o'clock in the morning for beefcake and valentine, Italian meals, and, and they nonstop, so they keep doing this. So tonight, when you get home, struck again because Ted and I are coming a little bit later. <laughs> but just let you know now. But uh, so I want to thank my parents, uh, you know, very much. And of course, for me, uh, Jesus Christ is number one. I wouldn't be able to get through this without him. And uh, he definitely gave me uh, a great love and appreciation for all the people within this business because there's so there's so many great people in it. So when we do knock it, remember there's so many great people. And um, it's just it's, I'm just happy to see we have events like this that we can hold in different places. So I took up too much of your time, but thank you very much. I appreciate it.